Alright, so I'm working on another N64 Ultra HDMI install, but I figured I'd shoot some video because I'm going to do cap replacement. I'm going to order from Mauser. Bought everything I need to do. A few of these. Most of the through hole caps are for the power supply. I'm going to have to find one of mine because Bob did not send his. And then I've got a few. There should be three. Maybe not. Surface mount caps for the main board. 10 microfarad and. Hmm. I hate it when it doesn't have a good description. I had to look up the part number because none of those numbers really st strike out at me as what it would be. Ordered tens and hundreds and forty sevens, so maybe this is a forty seven. I don't remember how many I ordered either. <laughs> I think these are all twelve oh six or twelve ten size, so they should fit where the SMD electrolytic caps are. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> Yeah, it just hit me. I have 100s in stock from tur doing Turbo Duo cap jobs. Okay, that makes sense. So, we'll get this thing opened up and uh, start looking around. All right, so first step is cleaning. And we do have some hair in here. It looks like some kind of pet hair right there. Not sure where it came from, but always clean them. What's funny is as dirty as this motherboard is, the heat sink is not dirty at all. Like somebody cleaned the heat sink, but they didn't take it off to clean the board. I don't blame them. Taking that off there is kind of risky. You could pull. I've seen pins come up on the RAM. I've no, I've uh, spoken about that before. I actually showed a fix of it actually back in the RGB NESR N64 days. All right, so I've got a list for this specific motherboard. It's a NUS CPU 08, and I'm down to just a few that I don't understand as far as electrical little ca electrolytic caps. And that is on the pin 18 of the MAV, M-A-V, dash N-U-S. And then I think it was um, 13 and 2, maybe, or 13 and 1, I can't remember. On the AMP, it's uh, 33, 24, and 28, uh, a 10 and 33s, and they just go to ground. So, that one right there. 18 of the MAV is a 10 microfarad to ground, and I want to say 24 was. Okay, it's on 14, and 28 was on 2. I did find one reference to the MAV chip pinout, but I couldn't find anything on the AMP. And it said something about pin 18 was being um, REF SND which I assume is reference sound because uh, I, I think a couple of these pins do go to the AMP chip so if it's sound I'm a little leery of replacing with ceramic so everything else except for these two and these two all are just power rails to ground um, C16 and 15. Let's see, 15 is your Luma and 16 is your composite video. And then 25 and 26 are right and left audio. Since I can't do 220 ceramics anyway, might as well go ahead and do a couple of uh, tens 
that are just the regular through hole capacitor capacitor for a replacement for these. Um, if you're doing, if you're, you know, if you're just doing the HDMI mod and you don't care about your analog outputs, then these four aren't going to matter to you really. But I would suggest keeping them on there. And I, I've always heard more uh, more information about the analog stuff needing to be an actual electrolytic instead of a ceramic. But I'm pretty confident all these other ones, uh, they're just the 3 volt, 12 volt, 5 volt, and then whatever V term is. C73 is a V term. They're all like uh, 68s and 33s. So it looks like just that uh, ref sound sound reference is about the only tin that I would think about replacing with a ceramic on this particular board though too so I have to I have to take that into account I'm not sure if I'm gonna find a whole lot of boards in my inventory at different boards but from um, console Vo console 5's website it looks like there's several revisions and they all do have seem to have different counts on the caps too. So, and, and the other thing is, these three caps that I'm not sure of, they do all go to ground. So, I wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal if they were ceramic instead of electrolytic. We'll see. So the next thing I wanted to do was to make sure that I ordered uh, correct SMD size on these, just to fit the pads. So. What I want to do is start clipping them off. And these are my Xlite 170Ds. This is what I use for cutting capacitors off. Highly recommend them. They're perfect for this. They're very sharp, flush cut. And I showed it in the duo video. But usually what I try to do is to cut them about like this so that my cutters are not. Uh, parallel with the legs but perpendicular like this. You can see the two tabs on each side. And I'm not trying to cut flush. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I just want to get somewhere around that bottom ring of the can. And put your finger over it so it doesn't fly off. And then you can just pry off the bottom of the can and you can break that plastic piece that'll come off. And what's left with is just the legs of the capacitor. You can just wipe those off with your soldering iron. Just like that. Okay, and that was a 68. Add a little bit of extra solder to the pads. They're pretty dry. If you want, you can put some flux on there to help. This is just a reusable flux pin. It's just rosin core solder in that in it. And there's my 100 microfarad ceramic capacitors. Uh, the 68s are 10 volt. I believe these are at least that, if not 16. Some tweezers here to help. Yeah. Went on quite nicely. And that will never leak and destroy traces. So I'll press on and then do some more of them.
Okay. I should have said something, but the I don't have 68 microfarad ceramics, but going up in microfarads isn't going to hurt this, especially for power rail stuff. They're just there to keep the power signal clean. That's all they're doing. So going up in microfarads is actually a good thing. Um, I did add some solder back in afterwards. And I will say you will probably need a pretty good iron for this because they're power rails. So they got really big thick traces going to the pads and apparently not much thermal relief. Had a lot of trouble with that one. But it was hard to get to as well. If you've got tweezers, hot tweezers, like so, I've got one burnout uh, tip on mine. That is also helpful if you have those. Very expensive, but they do work. Um, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and put it back together somewhat and test it just to make sure everything's still okay. And then I'll go back and do, let's see, I've got a couple more 68s and a 33 here that I know are power rail. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll test <clears throat> when I do each of those three. Um, the two, the, these four up here, the analogs, there's no reason to test that. I'm replacing electrolytic with electrolytic. So, yeah. Well, the test was successful. As you see the cart connectors back on there. Uh, for the 33 microfarad cap, so I've got three of them on this board. I'm going to do this one first. I think, uh, let's see, what was this? 142. That was the single and the only 12 volt capacitor. And the Mauser caps that I got doesn't show, but there I know they're 47. And the 33s, some of them are 25. Looks like maybe all of them are 25. So I ended up getting 47 microfarads, 25 volts replace those. So I want to do that one and then I'll do the 268s down here also with the hundreds and retest. Okay, retest with those three was fine. I'll try not to play too long since I don't have the heat sinks on these chips. Eh, they're only lukewarm. So now I'm going to do these two 33s. I don't see any harm in doing them both at the same time. And then I'll do that 10. And then I'll finish off with some uh, through hole electrolytics for those four. One of the tips I forgot about is with these nice flush cutters, you got a real pointy tip and you can actually cut the little nub off the top right there. And that way you don't have to try to break the plastic off, it'll just come off. There's still the legs of the capacitors to wipe off though. I am definitely going to have to re-clean this motherboard. You can see over here there's a, quite a bit of fluid that leaked out of the electrolytic capacitors when I cut them off. That's okay. Another successful test, so I'll do this last one, the 10 mic. 10 microfarad cap. I 
Well, that one was a perfect fit. So let's do one more test. So for the analog outputs, I caught a break on the 220s. The AV Famicom has a 220-10. So I've got a bunch of those for the high def NES cap kits. And there's also a 10 microfarad, but it's 50 volt. Just means it's going to be larger than I need. And in voltage, but that usually means that it's actually physically larger too. And I try to I want to kind of try to wait lay this one at least away since I'm going to be soldering the ultra HDMI ribbon cable over here. I'm going to get rid of that vertical space. And the big trick here will just be getting your legs of your new capacitor is bent over properly Take up quite a bit of room there. I think I'll do the large ones first. Now these are polarized, which means you need to remember what's negative, and what's positive, and they kind of give you some idea, some uh, sense of that with this white square here. See the corners there, and all, and as always, if you just forget, take your multimeter out. Set it for continuity. Well, I ain't gonna work here. <laughs> well, it will work. Actually, <clears throat> what I can do is, what you can do is test for ground on another capacitor, and you can tell that the corners that have been beveled are the positive. So, normally just take the legs and bend them out like that, and then cut them, like so. I want to lay that one somewhere like that. I forgot to add more solder to the pads. flux I usually end up adding that to the legs of the capacitors it's not a huge deal really the great thing about having those legs on there is you can actually twist your caps around and lay them just as long as those legs don't end up touching each other you're fine I'm not to leave that one up as it's covering pad on that one. So you don't want to make that bend too close to the cap. You want 
keep inside of that um, tend area, keep it inside the green square because your heat sink sits on top of here and that's where it touches down. Looks like I could have went much shorter on the legs on that one. Now, if you're going to ship this, it's not totally out of the question to throw down some hot glue. Yes, I know hot glue is the, the bane of modders, modders' existence. Everybody wants to ridicule it, but it would be perfect for this, you know, just so you can secure your caps down. Just a little dab underneath each cap would be more than enough. It's really, I mean, it's up to you. It's, it would take one heck of a bang for anything to happen to those. I mean, you need, it would be the point to the point where you'd be tearing off a solder pad or something, which those are super secure. Um, at this point, I'm going to re-clean the board, get all that flux off there, and I'm just going to use rubbing alcohol to do so. I've got some higher percentage stuff in there than what it was advertised as. And... Then I'll do the HDMI, Ultra, Ultra HDMI mod. By the way, these were all Nishikon, sourced from Mauser, so they're known, good quality, low ESR, high temperature caps, and that's what I'll be putting in the kits. All right, so I'm uh, set up to install the Ultra HDMI ribbon cable. It goes right in there, in that area, and. I'm going to use a little piece of hot glue like I did last time. Melt that with one of my older, crappier tips so that'll hold the ribbon cable down in the right place. And then I'm going to try to drag solder it with the, the newer JBC tip I got. This is the 949. That's a 32 millimeter wide tip, and I think it would just make easy work of drag soldering that. However, for this particular application, I would go with the other one. There is well, there is one that's uh, narrower. As you can see, that one thing is almost twice as wide as it needs to be to drag solder this ribbon cable onto those pins. And it may not work. I might I might end up with just one big um, solder bridge there. And that's okay, because I have other tips that we can rework that with and make it right. But I thought, you know, if that works just with one swipe, that'd be awesome. I will clean that. Before I do that, put fresh solder on it. Okay, so the plan is different angle of attack here, so I can lay that down on pin six, line it up with pin six over the melted hot glue. Just like that. And that's easy. Love it. Okay. Trial number one. Change tips here. Let that get hot so I can clean it off. Right now I'm just using a wet sponge. Yeah, 
extra clean. Put some fresh solder on it. Bad thing is that's holding a lot of solder. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And now I don't like my angle of attack so much. Come from this side. Get a bunch of flux on it. Holy cow. You know, at first glance, I don't see a single bridge. Maybe out here, right on the end. Point to that. Right out here. A little bit out of focus there. That's the problem with my macro lenses. It's not very good. It was a cheap lens. So the outer edges out here are usually in less focus. Especially when the depth of field is different. So, get my 10 by eye loop out. And look, see. Oh, that is just beautiful. My god, that was easy. But yes, I do have some shorts out on the end. Try to find my halfway decent 939 here. And put some more flux on it. Hopefully it'll just wipe off. Not so much luck. It could be those two pins are both ground anyway. Problem is the 939 is not really great for solder removal. Well, they're definitely not both ground pin or power plane or whatever. So, I get my 067 out. That was the tip that I used last time. Get a bit of a clean, you can see the divot. Maybe if I put it in the right place. So, there's not a lot of solder in it. There you go. Perfection. That's what I was looking for. Something to suck up the solder. So we'll give that a second look under the eye loop and then um, clean it off with a toothbrush and rubbing alcohol to get the flux residue off there. And then move on to the other three traces, I guess you would call them. Alright, so these two little ones are easy. I just go up to cap 141 and 130. It's recommended that you t tin them first. Which simply means to put some solder on them. flux on it first. Same with this one. Seems a little short. Why 
might be because I'm trying to fit my pliers into the equation. There we go. And down here, I did this last time. Take a, I'm trying to go for this far veer right there to solder to, which sucks. So I'm taking an old resistor capacitor leg and sticking it through the hole and soldering that down before I try to get the flat flex cable ear, is what Marshall was calling them, to solder to it. Solder to this side. Seems pretty secure, so I'll cut off the excess of the leg. There, the hard parts are done. Now, if I remember right, we fold this way. And that way. And then that will bend under to go to the main board. Doesn't have to be perfect just yet. Well, with all of that done, I guess what I should do is attach the main board. Let me zoom out a little bit here. contacts go down. And now I can actually test it to make sure it's working before I start putting all of the heat sinking and all that back on there. Okay, so ready to test. The HDMI cable is not plugged in. That's what Marshall says to do. And supposedly the LED should throb. Yep. We have a throbbing LED, so we plug in the HDMI cord to a powered on TV. The LED goes off, yes. And as the audio from the kit, I've got this one turned all the way down. So now we do left right triggers, D pad right, and C right for the menu. And we go into about and self test. Pin 17 stuck low. Well, that didn't. No wiring issues found. I said I had an issue and then it didn't. Well, that's odd. I will check pin 17 though.
So audio is running right now, so maybe there wasn't audio when it was doing the self-test. That's why it was thinking it was stuck low. Because it's not finding anything now. So that's good. I'm going to shut this off just because I don't have the heat sinks on there. Let's get that stuff back put, put back together. Alright, so I've got the hole cut. Didn't want to show that. I've shown that before in the other video, but I noticed the feet on this one are just shot. That one might be salvageable. Just clean it a little bit, but this one was completely gone. And I've got some feet here. Fits the circle pretty well, but it's probably a little taller than that one, so I'd like them to be the same height. So it's not three legging it. So I'll replace both here. Yeah. That's better. And we got our Ultra HDMI sticker. I like this. I guess it's got the hotkeys on it. Well, that didn't work. So now we can start working on getting all this back together. And I've got the foam pad over the AV connector there. Which, I'm already getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Let's connect up the Ultra HDMI board. I've got that foam piece put on there as well. Yeah, it looks like I could move that cap this way. I like that. And then we want to get that room cable to come through right there. Good. Feels like I'm hitting something. And I think it was just back there it needed to be pushed in. I don't know where to push, I guess. Like I said, this is about the only, what, the second time I've done an Ultra HD mine install, so a little bit ignorant of it yet.
So that was a little quickie of uh, scratch repair. Honestly, wipe it down with some WD-40 and a lot more of that stuff will disappear. Stuff that's just too deep, like that right there, that would take a lot to sand it down and make it right. That's actually an imperfection on the inside, what you're seeing right there. But yeah. I don't expect, I don't think Bob's expecting perfection on the shell. Since he bought it and sent it to me, he probably already knows all about that. But that would be the end of the installation. Now I'm just going to plug it in and test it. Well, as you can see, it still seems to be operating perfectly fine. So, big win for the uh, ceramic SMD caps. Um, if anybody's interested in me selling those feet, I could get more, you know, put them on my site as another option for the Ultra HDMI sale. Uh, eventually all those products will be separate cap kits, uh, like the Repro X. There's only one sale page and it's kind of a listing of a bunch of different stuff. That All that stuff will be eventually available separately to where you don't have to buy the Ultra HDMI or the Repro X PCB. You can buy all the other stuff separately. I'm just... I haven't figured out how to get the shop to show the categories. For some reason, it just wants to show the products only. So that's being set up. So I could probably throw those feet on there for next to nothing, really. So I'm going to let this sit and cycle through the attract mode for uh, maybe even overnight, just just to be sure that everything's good to go with the capacitors and whatnot. But I think we're I think we're safe. Uh, I might try to get the final okay from Marshall. You know, see if he has any uh, qualms about me using the big SMD ceramic caps over the electrolytics. But I think it's safe to say it's it's okay. I mean, I've been doing it on the duos for like two years now, or something like that. Which I haven't done a lot of them, but I did some two years ago, and they're still out there working. So if they were, if it was not a thing you could do, I'd probably have heard about it by now. So, next video, I'm going to do uh, the caps in the power supply. I do I have been selling those cap kits, but I need to make a video of me actually doing one. So, look for that pretty soon.